Hello YouTube friends. This is the second time I've started doing this because Norma was fast asleep in the window over there. I started talking. Hello YouTube friends. Up she pops. That's her cue to come along and bomb the video. So you can sit on my knee while I talk about this. This is probably going to be the final part of this uh, commission quilt that I'm talking about here. This is the Trip Around the World quilt. Uh, made using two jelly rolls, K facet jelly rolls. Uh, so that was all the fabric that was used and then some lovely green fabric for the backing fabric. So I ironed and ironed and ironed the whole quilt top, pressed all those seams open, all those nesting seams there, pulled out any little threads that were uh, that you always get on the quilt top and then I wrestled with the wadding. Now the wadding uh, is, um, come on Rita, come on. The wadding is bamboo and cotton 50-50 mix and uh, when you're doing this kind of thing it's always helpful to have two people <laughs> to help you to um, straighten this all out. But like I say, I wrestled with it. Come on, Rita. I wrestled with the huge bale of wadding and the table being not quite big enough, but I did eventually get the whole thing smoothed out and the three layers all laid out on the big table. I did. This cat's very restless tonight. Then I pinned all three layers together. That's the way I prefer to do it. Uh, there's lots of different ways of doing this with a quilt top. Uh, pinned all the layers together. And you know what I haven't got any film of is me quilting it. But um, rest assured that I did. <laughs> and I quilted uh, along the middle of the squares so that I made a uh, a line describing the big uh, bold squares that the red fabric made uh, and then in the other direction as well. It looked great when it was done. So this is a colour of Aurifil called Marrakesh. You can see, can't you, when I put it against the background of the quilt, that this lovely variegated thread matches in beautifully with all the different colours I've got uh, of these different two different colours of, of uh, cotton. So in this box here, these are all the little strips that were left when I cut the pieces I needed from the jelly roll strip and I popped them all in here knowing that I would need them for the binding. So yesterday I made the binding now, a word about the binding, because I know I like my bindings to be thin, and this one is going to be thin, but two and a half inches made in the binding made how I would want it, which would mean folding it in half, sewing it on, and then folding it round would have made a quarter inch binding. And so in order to make the binding the size I want it to be, what I've done is I've taken the jelly roll strips, the little tiny scraps of them, and sewn them together, and then I've cut a two and a half inch strip of the backing fabric and sewn that onto here and then folding them closed and pressed them so that if I press them properly you don't even see the green and that's a way of making the type of binding I want to make with, uh, without having the thick enough, uh, the, the wide enough uh, fabric to do it with. So that's a, uh, my top tip there. So plenty of that green fabric on the back. So what I'm going to do this morning, uh, this I think this will be the final push. I'm also embroidering a little panel to put on the back and I'm doing that you know, in the evenings and I'll sew that on the very last thing that I do. But uh, for now, I'm going to put the walking foot onto the sewing machine. And, and when I sew, so I use the Aurifil for hand stitching, but I use the Aurifil uh, 50 weight, I think this is. I haven't got my glasses on. Yeah, this is 50 weight in grey. 
And this grey, it actually fits in the background of anything you're sewing, anything at all. So I'll, uh, I've got a, I ordered another couple of these the other day uh, when I was getting some more Marrakesh. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put the walking foot on uh, the sewing machine uh, and then we're going to stitch the binding on. And this is this. I want to do this today because then this will get this off the board and I can start making films down here again without it being problematic. Uh, so let's do that now. So for those of you who are new to quilting uh, or don't know what I'm talking about with a walking foot here. So I'm going to take my actually, guys, I am going to need glasses for this. So I'm going to take my regular foot off. If I can get them. So this walking foot then, I know it looks a bit complicated, but it's actually not. It's really, really easy to fit. You just have to make sure that you get the arm above the little screw that holds the, the needle in place. I'm not sure which is the best angle to show you. Give that a little tighten up with my screwdriver so it's not going to come loose. And now this walking foot is safely on. Now what a walking foot does, here I've explained this before and if you know what I'm doing here just skip on a bit because you know it's, it's straightforward for people who know what they're doing. But if you've never seen something like this before I'll tell you what it is. At the bottom of the sewing machine here there are these little jagged teeth that cling onto the fabric as it's going through a little bit. You still have to feed it through, but it clings on and it feeds it through. They're called the feed dogs. And just as an aside, if you were doing machine embroidery, you would drop the feed dogs so that they wouldn't get in the way, so that you could control the fabric instead of the machine doing it. When you're putting a lot of layers of fabric through the machine, which I'm about to do, the quilt top, the wadding, the quilt backing and then all three layers of uh, all two layers rather of the binding you know both layers of the binding then that's a lot of layers and uh, plus the wadding which can cause for a bit of slippage which means that the bottom fabric goes through quicker than the top fabric and it will drag and you'll end up with a really unhappy mess so what's on the bottom of um, a walking foot it's got its own uh, feed dogs <laughs> so that from the top it feeds the fabric through and from the bottom it feed the fab feeds the fabric through. Now I've done this before on other videos I've, I've done uh, I've put bindings on so you've seen me do that but I'm going to put the binding on this quilt do you know it hasn't got a name it hasn't got a name think of a name before I send it away won't I right then guys I'm just going to get the the quilt down off the board sew the binding on and then I'm going to have the lovely lovely task of hand stitching the binding down I've said this before it's my favorite favorite part of quilting I like every single stage every stage but I love sewing the binding down because it's the last thing it's the last thing you have to do Okay then, so here's my binding. I've measured, I did all my calculations and I've got about uh, this much longer than I need. So that's fine. Uh, maybe even a bit more. So we'll, we'll sew that binding on now. When I finished making the quilt top and I knew I was going to have a really scrappy binding, I had this idea that it might look good framed with a little bit of green between the very, very busy quilt top rather than going straight into a very scrappy binding. I thought it would look quite cool if it had a, a narrow green border. So now I've got to decide just how narrow, uh, because this is, uh, as I'm sewing the binding on, then I've got to be sure that that line is straight. This is always a bit like wrestling when you're doing a massive quilt like this. It's like, this actually isn't that massive. It's 60 inches by 72 inches. So I've just got to work out then where I want, how, I, how wide I want my strip to be. Not very, I think, is the answer. 
Okay, I'll get on and do that now. So I'm coming up to my first corner. I've shown how to do corners on binding, or the way that I do them, when I was doing the flying goose quilt, which was a year ago, but the way I put corners hasn't do corners hasn't changed. So I'm going to refer you back to that video if you want to see how it is I'm doing these corners. It'll be easier than me trying to film it on here. So now I've trimmed all the edges off. The floor always looks very colourful at the end of a project like this. And so now I'm ready to do the binding, to just flip that over and sew that down, which will give me a binding that looks like that. But before I do that, I want to show you, I wonder if I can show you, just not lose my needle, put my needle there, and all the things. So, when I was quilting this, at the very end, I actually quilted all the way round the edge where the edge meets the green. And I want to do the same again here. I know you can't even see it, but I can see it. I know it's there. And so I'm going to spend a few minutes now just doing before I sew it down, because if I do it after I've sewn it down, you'll see the stitches uh, on the back. So I'm going to stitch in the ditch here all the way round which is just going to be like a little finishing stitch. There's no need to do it, but it will make me happy. I'm using this Marrakesh Aurifil here. I cut myself a length of this. I'm going to wax it a few times over this scrappy little wax beeswax candle. And then I'm going to do that stitch all the way around the outside. Uh, it won't take long. And then I'll stitch the binding down and that'll be the end of this quilt. Except for the panel on the back. Oh, and except for the tie as well. Loads of fiddly bits to do, aren't there? Which I love. I love. Okay then, so um, I'll show you what I mean. Just thread that up there. I'm just going to tie the smallest of knots just to keep it. don't even need a knot really. I could just bury, you know, the end of the thread in the back somewhere, but I put the smallest of knots in. You can barely see it. It's just a tiny knot. It just keeps it in place. Uh, it doesn't matter where we start. I was going to pop that in there, behind there. Put my thimble on. And what I mean is, I did a stitch here where the green meets the quilt top and I'm now going to do a stitch here where the binding meets the green. Don't need to do it, 
really simple but I'm going to do that now and I'm going to chat to you while I do it because hand stitching is one of my favourite things to do it's about being slow now today well, it's June it's pouring with rain out there absolutely pouring with rain the only thing to do is to be inside with glorious, glorious colour. I mean, come on. Have you seen anything more colourful than this this week? Probably not. So I'm going to stitch this. I'm going to then stitch the binding down. And we're done. Now, I've really enjoyed making this. And so, in the shop... In the shop already, there is a custom order for the Flying Goose quilt. Well, I'm going to add this quilt design to the custom orders. And the way that I'm going to offer those is just the same. The lady who wants this quilt got in touch with me through that um, means and asked, would I make her a quilt? Of course I will. Here it is. And so I'm going to offer custom orders then to anybody else who wants them. But because I've got so many other things that I'm doing at the moment, uh, I'm going to say that I'll allocate... Uh, it takes me about a month to fit a quilt like this into all the other things that I'm doing. Uh, it takes me a, a, about a month to do. So, um, You know what I've done, don't you? I've stitched the binding to itself on the corner. <laughs> so I'm going to have to undo that little bit of stitching there, liberate it and stitch it back down again. It's good to keep the mistakes in. We all make them. If you say you don't, it's not that's not true. Because we all do. Don't we, Norma? We all make little mistakes. And I think... I've made one here. So Norma's covering it up for me nicely. She's concerned about my modesty. <laughs> okay then, so all I need to do then is not lose that needle. Excuse me, Nor. You stay there. And I just need to quilt to stitch that down. Uh, we'll take it that way. Just a minute. Have you ever done that? Have you ever stitched the corner binding to itself with the machine? Because I just did. It's sorted now. sorted yeah so that's what I'm going to do in the shop I'm going to indicate somehow or other that uh, we can uh, allocate a month so this is June so this is June's one I mean I know I started it in May but we'll have to start somewhere won't we now September has already got its quilt order so that month won't be available and October is not going to happen because there's other stuff happening in October that I'm going to be busy doing but August, July, August, November, I'm going to say that we can allocate a month for a commission quilt. I'll stick it in the shop and I'll put a link in the description box below so that you can see what it is I'm talking about. So what I'm saying is I'll change the listing for the custom quilts in the shop to include this pattern and the flying goose pattern and then I've got another pattern in my head that I want to do which I want to show you it's called the St Louis 16 patch and that one is the quilt that I sleep on upstairs underneath uh, um, on my bed okay okay then guys I'll see you back at the end of this I'll show you what I'm doing look can you even see it nah but I can I'll show you at the end. 
This is how I make the little label that I put on the back of the quilt. I use my window as a bit of a light box and write on with a fabric pen, which will iron out. Uh, and you can just about see the wording there. Then I put it in an embroidery hoop. I'm no embroiderer. Uh, I definitely am not, but I can do a very simple uh, bit of um, hand stitching here to do the wording and the date so that it goes on the back of the quilt. There we go. Uh, and yeah, that was what I did. Of course I've got the wrong end, haven't I? I'll have to take it from the middle. It's got to be right sides together. What am I doing? Oh, I've got the right end. No, I haven't. God, that took long enough. 